Now just yesterday, Baltimore Ravens head coach John Harbaugh, he spoke to the media and they asked him the question, what was going on with Lamar Jackson? Why did he miss practice yesterday for the Baltimore Ravens? And what did John Harbaugh do? He said, well, you got to wait for Wednesday's practice report and Wednesday's injury report to see the status of Lamar Jackson and really any other Baltimore Ravens players that maybe could be or dealing with any type of injury. So that led a lot, left a lot of us frustrated, left a lot of us wondering like, hey, what's going on? Why don't you just tell us? But like I always tell people, you got to remember with John Harbaugh, he tries to have a competitive advantage. So he will not tell you what's going on until the absolute deadline for him to tell you what's going on. And that's exactly what happened yesterday. But you do, of course, have insiders, you have reporters, you have analysts like your Ian Rappaport, like your Adam Schefters, like your Mike Garofalo, who all let us know the status of one Lamar Jackson. We're getting ready to talk about that shortly. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on so you don't miss a single video, a single update with our Baltimore Ravens. Also, leave a like on the video. I, I appreciate y'all doing that. I appreciate the fact that y'all are just straight up, y'all are family, man. Y'all are family. We, we have a lot of fun on here. We have a lot of serious conversations. We have a lot of fun conversations, but... We do it all together, so I appreciate y'all a lot. Now, with Lamar Jackson and his status, um, all three of those reporters that we just mentioned, they said that Lamar Jackson missed practice yesterday because he was sore. His body was just sore, so he was tired, probably tired of carrying his Baltimore Ravens team, but his body was just done. Um, and what I think it was, I think his body just went into like sort of a state of shock. And what I mean when I say that is that you know how when you're used to doing something physically, whether you used to running, whether you used to exercising, whether you used to playing a sport, whatever it may be, you used to doing this on a weekly basis or a daily basis, however much you do it, you do it consistently, but then you may not do it for a while. And you think about Lamar Jackson, the last football game that he played was January 28th or 29th, whenever the AFC Championship game was against the Chiefs. And he had not played a football game all the way till what, September 5th against the Chiefs again. Uh, but not only had he not played football for a long time, because he didn't play in the preseason, remember that. He didn't play in the preseason. He, of course, has been working out, showing up to the Ravens offseason stuff, well, for the most part, for the mandatory stuff. But Lamar Jackson had not played in the preseason. So this was his first football game. And not only was it his first football game since January 28th, but the way that he played, like, he went hard. He was going crazy with it. Like, Lamar Jackson was dropping a shoulder and all. He got uh, all them passing yards. He got a bunch of rushing yards, too. So Lamar was putting in a whole lot of work. So just like somebody who's returning to running for the first time in a while, returning to exercising for the first time in a while, and then you really put that work in like crazy, initially, while you're in the process of it, that momentum's going to have you feeling good. That adrenaline's going to have you feeling right. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm back, baby. Here we go. But then the next day, ooh, especially for us older folks, that next day or even within the next two days, you may feel like Peter, Spider-Man, where he told Tony, man, I, I don't feel so good. I, I don't feel so good. And, and your body just like, oh, it gets sore. It gets achy. It gets tired. It's exhausted. So it just, I think with Lamar Jackson, I think that's what happens. So he's just getting back into the groove, getting back into the thick of things with football. But he's going to be okay. He is going to be all right. But it's nice to know that it ain't nothing serious. It ain't nothing crazy. And I, I haven't seen anybody tripping or freaking out over anything like that. So that's a good thing. But it's nice to know the status of Ravens QB1 officially. Shout out to our team, Keep It Clean patrons. If any of y'all would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenviz. And if you don't want to, it is A-OK. -okay. But we have entered my favorite part of these videos where we feature your questions. If you would like to send a question, you can either send it on Patreon if you're a Team Keep It Clean patron member. Or if you're not, you can send it to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Com. Real quick, I appreciate all y'all because y'all been sending it to the correct email. And another thing, y'all been sending a lot of questions every single day. We get a bunch of emails from y'all that y'all have sent your questions in, and I appreciate that a lot. Sometimes it could be a little overwhelming sometimes, just a little bit. Not too much, though. But I appreciate it like crazy. I appreciate y'all just sharing your thoughts, sharing your input on whatever it is that we're talking about and whatever it is that you want to hear about. So I really love y'all. Now, this first question, next question. It came from my guy, Derek, who is a Team Keep It Clean patron. And Derek, I appreciate you always been sending in questions. And first of all, before I even get to reading this, I hope that this week is a lot better than last week for you. I know you had a lot going on last week as far as the, uh, the I think the tire had went out, uh, as far as something that you had to pay for. I forgot what it was, but I hope that this week goes a lot better for you than last week did. But anyway, getting into it, he said, and Graven, good morning. Man, how are you? Just want to say, man, we love you and truly appreciate you, man. 
uh, a prayer not only for myself and for my family, but also for you, your wife, the dogs, Carter, your baby girl, man. Just please be safe in every aspect of life. Uh, waking up out of the bed, driving grocery stores, stores, malls, etc., school, to traveling, all the way back to the comfort of home. Hey, I, I appreciate that a lot, man. I, I, I love you too, Derek, and, and I appreciate that. Um, life is uh, definitely a gift. It's a gift, and um, it's important that we appreciate it. It's, impre- it's important that we appreciate every single second. Um, it's important that we appreciate just every part of it, man, um, because it's it's a blessing. It, it, it really, really is. So many people nowadays, um, they're just so angry, and, and they're looking for a reason to be angry. They're looking for a reason to take out the anger on somebody, but it, it's, it's a sad world that we live in, but it's not all sad. Not everybody's sad. Not everybody's angry. And it's nice when you find people that are happy, that are genuinely happy. That And we're not all going to be happy 24-7. They got times we get upset, we get frustrated, we get mad, we get triggered, we get this, that, and a third. But it's important to, like, those, those be the, the minimal moments. The, the, make, make sure the maximum moments for you are the ones where you are positive, where you are happy, where things are going good. Man. So I, I appreciate starting off like that. Uh, he said, anyway, let's get back into another Ravens appreciation post for a former Raven that you and the rest of the team keep it clean aren't expecting. That is... Deshaun Jackson. Oh, okay. He said, though his stint here was brief. Oh, it was briefer than brief. Uh, he said, you can tell he vibe with the locker room uh, and the guys and the culture. Go watch Marlowe's live after the Monday Night Football game versus the Saints. LOL. But no, aside from that, in his 2510 podcast, oh, it was shady. He said, where he's talking from his end, you can see a Ravens helmet, not just push aside to the background where you have to squint. <laughs> you know, you see it as clear as day right next to him. And even on his Instagram stories, a few times he was wearing a Ravens hoodie and a cap. Uh, long after the 2022 season ended and a bit after the Super Bowl, the Chiefs, yuck, won against the Eagles. And interviews about Lamar Jackson, Deshaun defends Lamar, especially most recently when they said Lamar was like Russell Westbrook. Bottom line, engraving, I wish Deshaun Jackson came to the Ravens in 2019 and could have been a part of Lamar Jackson's first MVP year and the most recent one. Yeah, that Deshaun Jackson, yeah, that, that would have been nice, man. It would have been nice if we got, like, that Deshaun Jackson, like, the one that yeah we know about. Because with him, like, Deshaun Jackson still had his speed. He still made some plays, but he was just, again, he was just to the point in his career where it was, it was, he was very close to being done. So he would make a big play and had to come out for a while. We wouldn't see him for a long period of time uh, during the games. So I remember the big catch he had against the Saints. I remember a big catch, uh, the one in Jacksonville. Uh, but shout out to Deshaun Jackson. Anyway, continuing, he said, um, if Deshaun was here in Baltimore, imagine the spunk, the humor, the charisma him and Mark Ingram would have had. Imagine him and Odell Beckham Jr. Sure, at one point they were divas, but once Deshaun Jackson and OBJ matured, they were so well-liked and respected. They just brought that energy and spunk. Imagine what could have been. It. Who knows? Maybe a couple of deep bombs in 2019 against the Titans to Deshaun could have been what they needed, and Hollywood would have been freed up more. Oh, yeah, because Hollywood, that was the only receiver that had, that had a great game. That was the only one. But anyway... Like he said, who knows, in the AFC Championship game, Deshaun would have been familiar with Andy Reid and could have told Lamar, look, I'm going to do, do this and work this route. And he knows I'm older, but he never underestimates me. That could have freed up some more guys, and Deshaun always takes care of himself. But anywho, what could have been, what should have been, LOL. Shout out to Deshaun Jackson, man. Yeah, I, I hear him on, um, well, when they were speak. Now it's the, the facility with Emmanuel Acho and him. But, yeah, I, I have heard him a lot of times talk about Lamar Jackson still have he got a deep respect for Lamar Jackson and he he always talks about how he's not him and Lamar Jackson not necessarily close but he did get to know Lamar Jackson from playing with him and he talks about just how special he is and we know how special he is but um, one thing that I appreciated with Deshaun Jackson he talked about context he doesn't just make things black and white all right this is what it is that's it no he talks about context so he goes in depth with details I remember they were having a conversation about the Baltimore Ravens offense uh, Emmanuel Acho he was was like all right Ravens fans what is it is because Ravens fans they wanted Greg Roman to be fired and so he ran the ball a lot uh, but then with when the Ravens get to the playoffs y'all saying they're not running enough what's it gonna be and Deshaun Jackson he corrected him he said well it's it's more about balance and, and he said because when they in the regular season yeah they run all over the place but he said in the postseason they don't so he talked about how that makes stuff harder and that, how they, that makes them more one-dimensional, how they just don't run at all. So he said, obviously, they still need to pass, but incorporate the running game, too. So I, I appreciated him using content because you don't see that often, especially in the media, especially when it comes to Lamar Jackson. So, yeah, shout out to, Des- to Deshaun Jackson. Next question came from Mars Rose, said, in defense of Hobbs. And Graven, whole week two of the NFL season is treating you well. Yeah, so far, so good. I appreciate it. I've noticed a lot of people seem to want Harbaugh gone, but I don't understand why. Harbaugh is one of the last examples of a CEO-style head coach. 
coach. Ravens have a different coaching system than any other team. The GM and head coach are connected at the hip, meaning Harbaugh and Ozzie were collaborating, and that was highly influential on developing EDC and his ideas today. Our history at defensive coordinator is highly decorated under John Harbaugh. The only weakness I think he's had uh, is selecting consistently good offensive coordinators. Even then, his failures are mostly around 2015 and 2017, which we all knew was the decline of Joe Flacco and the failure of Tressman as offensive coordinator. Cam Cameron did his job. Gary Kubiak was a great hire, and Roman had his successes even if he had a few big stains on his resume. Oh, he's starting off powerful. He said, Harbaugh was lauded for his aggressiveness going forward early in Lamar's career from like 2018 to 2021. It seems now fans are more impatient than ever wanting Lamar to get his ring. And now when we lose, they want to fire Harbaugh. Not realizing how Harbaugh has his fingers in every single aspect of this team. Firing him means replacing the Harbaugh family connections, potentially changing how the team drafts. And what I feel is most overlooked, firing Lamar's number one supporter. Say what you want about Baltimore not signing over number one wide receiver. Harbaugh has never questioned Lamar, not once, not even as the rest of the football world did. Harbaugh has so much faith in Lamar, he threw Flacco to the curb after seeing Lamar play one game as a starter. We need to revisit the roster turnover from 2018 to 2019. I don't think any other coach, or I don't think another coach has turned the team around as much as Harbaugh changed Baltimore to fit Lamar in one year. Firing Harbaugh means Lamar may have to win in spite of a coach who may give him his number one wide receiver, but will also replace Lamar if Lamar doesn't fit this new coach's scheme. Fans may not think this is likely, but we've seen more big flops as teams try to replace coaches than we've seen big successes. For every Shanahan, there are three Urban Myers. What do you think, Engraven? Sorry for the novel, but I don't want Baltimore getting an Urban Meyer. Harbaugh seems close to getting a second ring. I think he'll retire after, and I like the succession plan far better than a sudden replacement. Oh, this was a powerful one. I like this one. I like how ooh, y'all, y'all bringing it right from jump. I like it. Now, with Harbaugh. Um, I've been somebody that has a few different times been on the fire John Harbaugh train. Um, at the beginning of the year, though, I, I don't waste my time with it. The first game of the season, I, I don't waste my time with it. And, and anybody who had has been saying fire Harbaugh at the beginning of the season, more power to you. But for me, like, I'm waiting, seeing how things go. I can understand why people have said fire John Harbaugh. But it's just, just because people are tired. People are very, very tired. Now, I get what you're saying. Yeah, for every um, good coach, there could be three bad ones. And if you just fire somebody, yeah, you got to replace them. Is that replacement going to be better? It could be. Is that replacement going to be worse? They could be. But you, you, you would never know unless you try it. Now, with the Baltimore Ravens, they have not had many head coaches. So that's a good thing. So there have been a lot of consistency with the Baltimore Ravens. So that's good. Um, they are an organization who I feel like would really do their due diligence if they did decide to make a move. At head coach, but I mean, you know, they're not going to. John Harbaugh gonna go out on his own terms. I, I just do not foresee any scenario, any situation where John Harbaugh gets fired. I mean, he's next door neighbors with the Ravens GM. Like, <laughs> hello, he, he ain't going nowhere. Uh, and that's the, whether I agree with it or disagree with it. Harbaugh is not going anywhere unless he decides to call it quits. But anyway, um, the reason why Ravens fans be so frustrated and say fire Harbaugh is because the Baltimore Ravens have had these great rosters. They've had these phenomenal teams. And they've twice in recent years been the best team in the league. Two times. Two times with nothing to show for it. That's why. That's why fans are frustrated with John Harbaugh. It's because of the way the Baltimore Ravens have been going out. Like if I feel like fans will be a lot less frustrated with John Harbaugh if the Baltimore Ravens with the, their best teams that they've been having, if they went out more like they did this past Thursday against the Chiefs, if they were going out like that, then I feel like fans would be less frustrated because, well, no, they still would be. But if, if Ravens just played their game in those big moments, like 2019, I'm thinking of 2019 and 2023, where the Ravens had the best teams in the league. And then they got, they got the number one seed, got to the playoffs, and well, in, in 2019, play the first playoff game with, in, in 2023, they won one, but then in the Chiefs, they, well, you know how that went. So I, people just tired. They tired. They're also tired of feeling like, the Baltimore Ravens are not getting Lamar Jackson's true potential. And we talked about this before. Yes, he's won two MVPs under these John Harbaugh-led Baltimore Ravens. So I get that. And I, I think John Harbaugh is a good coach. I think he's a really good coach. He definitely got his flaws. Every single coach got their flaws. Well, maybe not Andy Reid. What flaws does he have? He ain't, this dude ain't got no flaws. But anyway, with John Harbaugh, he's a really, really good coach. But uh, Ravens fans are just tired of the same thing happening over and over and over the same way happening over and over and over and yeah we get it. it it would be a big risk if the Baltimore Ravens moved on from John Harbaugh I completely understand that 
but it could potentially be a big reward too. But again, that's not a conversation for right now, in my opinion, because he ain't going nowhere. So let's hope for the best this season with John Harbaugh. And I get what you say. He, he's had a lot of success. Uh, some, some, some different things that you mentioned uh, with John Harbaugh. You talked about like uh, the only weaknesses that you see with him is selecting consistently good offensive coordinators. What's crazy is that um, this thing, it just keeps happening. It's, it's weird with his offensive coordinators. It's like that, yeah, that, that just keeps happening where the offensive coordinator, the offense is just, they, they end up getting stale. And it's like, well, what is going on? Like over and over and over. Defense is like, no, defense be doing their thing. But that has also been a Baltimore Ravens thing, even before John Harbaugh, where it was defense, 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 but not necessarily offense. Now, under John Harbaugh, it was really under Lamar Jackson. Once Lamar Jackson got here, Ravens offenses, they've been pretty good. <laughs> a lot of times they've been pretty great. Now, as far as the aggressiveness, that part can be tricky because it all depends. It, it all depends. Yeah, I remember that 2019 against the Seahawks. It was like, yeah, oh, you want to go for it? Yeah, let's go for it. Okay, go for it. Let's get it. Um, and that aggressiveness, it, it, for me, it all depends. It, it's situational for me. I'm not like, a, all right, let's go for it on every single fourth down type of guy. And I'm not like, a, oh, let's be reserved every single fourth down type. No, it just all depends on the situation. It depends on the game-by-game -game situation. It depends on how many points you're up by, how many points you're down by, what the score is, how much time is left on the clock. Everything is situational for me when it comes to the aggression. Uh, and a lot of times I like the aggression. Because it's like, all right, hey, let's go. And, yeah, you said Harbaugh has supported Lamar. He has supported Lamar. He certainly has. Verbally. There have been some times um, where it hasn't felt like he fully supported Lamar. I Man, I remember. Because I remember we made a video. Um, it, was a couple, it was years ago. Maybe like two, three years ago. Uh, where we talked about how we wish Harbaugh would have supported Lamar uh, a lot more earlier. Um, I forgot what was going on at that time. But anyway, uh, for the most part, yeah, Harbaugh has been a big, 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 big supporter of Lamar Jackson. And, and I mean, you got to be. He got to be. Like, we remember 2018. <laughs> Harbaugh, do you remember the articles and stuff? Oh, the Ravens and John Harbaugh, they're going to have a mutual parting of a ways. Oh, we won't forget. But then Lamar Jackson got inserted into the starting lineup. And like you said, Harbaugh ain't look back. And even for Flacco, who Harbaugh won a, a Super Bowl with. Super Bowl. Like, you forever tied together. That is the quarterback that you won a Super Bowl with. Y'all got plenty of playoff wins. He won a Super Bowl MVP. Y'all are forever tied, man. Y'all y'all are family. Yeah, that, like, Joe Flacco, good with y'all, man. He's good with the Ravens, good with Harbaugh. Y'all forever locked in. And he was willing to be like, Joe... We got to take you around back, man. He, he lasted him. He really did. Because, yeah, once Lamar came in, Lamar was winning and stuff. He, oh, mm, Joe, oh, well, sorry. I love it. Thanks for everything. Then they traded him to the Broncos. and it, That was crazy. Like, I remember that. I, I just remember because, again, we were so used to Flacco being a quarterback. So when Lamar came in, it was like, okay, it's different. It's different. Like, Lamar taking over his quarterback. We ain't no problem with it. Because he gave life to the Baltimore Ravens. Because the Ravens were, they were like, they weren't doing so well. And they didn't have an injection of life. They needed it. So Lamar Jackson provided that. But with Flacco, uh, especially when he got healthy, we were thinking, oh, what's going to happen? Then that playoff, that playoff game, first playoff game, 2018, when the Ravens were struggling, the offense was struggling, a play calling, oh, my goodness, it was so frustrating. Uh, we don't even want to talk about it. But anyway, uh, in that playoff game, when he did not turn to Flacco, that was when it was official for Lamar Jackson that, oh, it's you now. It's you now. And, and they were, that's when they were officially done with Joe Flacco. Not in a bad way, but just they moved on. So that, that really showed Harbaugh's support for Lamar. And, and Harbaugh has, of course, said so many different things about Lamar Jackson, so many different positive things, and showed his support, especially this offseason too. This, this offseason, um, when Harbaugh was talking about Lamar for like, like four or five minutes, now that may not sound like a long time, but to hear John Harbaugh talk about somebody, the way that he spoke about Lamar for so long, like just straight, just talking about Lamar, talking about what they will envision for Lamar Jackson, talking about the past for Lamar Jackson, talking about how people continue to doubt Lamar Jackson. People continue to say he's not a quarterback, Lamar Jackson. Like Harbaugh was really going in. And I appreciated that so much from John Harbaugh, man. I really, really did. But it's not just about what you say. Like we talked about yesterday, actions speak a whole lot louder than words. So if you're going to say all that cool, Show it. 
Like, and, and that's been another thing with, with a lot of Ravens fans where we've been frustrated with, with John Harbaugh with the Baltimore Ravens just not providing as much as they could have and should have for Lamar Jackson. It didn't. And that's why I say earlier, they, they have not maximized his potential. And that's crazy to say. Like, you, as somebody who's looking at something that's black and white, and you, you say, oh, the Baltimore Ravens have not maximized Lamar Jackson's potential. They're going to be like, what? How, how could they not have maximized Lamar Jackson's potential? This dude got two MVPs. And that's a great argument to have. Like, oh, my, he's been the best player in the league, not once, but twice. Two times. How could somebody not have their potential maximized if they've been the best player in the league? But he hasn't. He hasn't. And you mentioned the number one receiver. Like, and not even just the number one, but just providing better at that position. If this is a quarterback. Your quarterback's number one job to throw the ball. You should want to give him the best of the best that you can. At that position, the guys who catch the ball. Now, at tight end, they've drafted and developed wonderfully under Lamar Jackson because Lamar Jackson came in with Mark Andrews. So, obviously, Mark Andrews did his thing. Hayden Hurst. When Hayden Hurst was here, he was not bad at all. Like, when he left, that's when everything just, I don't know what happened. With Hollywood, when he left, he just started getting hurt and stuff. But it's, it's been crazy. But um, tight end, drafting and develop, yes. Wide receiver, drafting and develop, yeah. Hollywood, he, he did his thing. And Zay Flowers, so far so good. Rashad Bateman, question mark, but their potential's there, so we'll see. But Baltimore Ravens, with, with their history at receiver, it has not been pretty overall. So I, I just wish that they would have done a better job of mixing. Like how the Dol like the Dolphins did with two. Like they, they drafted Jalen Waddle. So they drafted first round receiver, but then they went and got a Tyreek Hill too. They said, no, no, Jalen Waddle is good, but that's not enough. We want more. So they went and got Tyreek Hill. And that made such a big difference. You look at Jalen Hurts. You look, they drafted Devontae Smith. So, but they, they also had uh, A.J. Brown. They traded for A.J. Brown. So they doubled down. And now they just recently traded for, what, Jahan Dawson a couple weeks ago. So that's, that, I just wish the Baltimore Ravens would have done something like that for Lamar Jackson to really, like, they've gotten a lot out of him. But to really get even more, I really wish they would have went in like that. Next question came from my guy, Jason E.G. He said, Engraving, my man, congratulations on the birth of your daughter. Hope you and the family are adjusting well to the new life in the house. Hey, I appreciate that. Thank you, man. He said, I took a complete mental break after the AFC Championship game. Now, I was there. Oof, oof. I, um, mm, I, I feel for anybody that was there. It's crazy because we were actually supposed to be there, but there was a miscommunication. And it, 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 it worked out. It didn't work out for the Ravens, but... Oh, that was rough. And he said, I made the conscious choice to separate myself from off-season chatter and noise. Look, so many Ravens fans did that. Like I told y'all, man, we um, just nobody wanted to watch anything, talk anything with Baltimore Ravens. It, it was rough. But anyway, he said, I think everything that can be said about week one has been said with the exception of one question leading into week two. Do we collectively believe Zach or learn his lesson in what turned out to be his baptism by fire as a defensive coordinator going against Andy Reid? Andy Reid saw the speed he has on offense, uh, the middle of the field, crossing routes, and saw all linebackers and saw fool. Poor Malik Harrison. What is your level of comfort in regards to his or his ability to live and learn? Just one of those things we're going to have to wait and see. Because it was he was put in such a tough situation. Going against the best. Like, going against the best. Like, the second best that he could have went against would be Kyle Shanahan in that offense. Like, so, whether it's Andy Reid or Kyle Shanahan, those would have been some ultimate tests for Zach Orr. But I thought he did pretty well. For a first-time defensive coordinator, and that's your first game? Against Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid? And the Chiefs? What? In Arrowhead? What? With the refs? What? So, yeah, I say Zach Orr did pretty good, but now it's just about us seeing his consistency. What is he going to do from here? This question came from my guy, Harry. He said, hello, Engraving, my friend. Harry, what's up? Man, it's been a long time. Yeah, he probably took a little break, too. He said, uh, how are you and the team Keep It Clean family doing? Hopefully, you're getting some rest with your baby girl. <laughs> In there, but now I appreciate you. He said, my princess is one going on 28. <laughs> and every time she learns something new, her sleep pattern changes. Oof, so hang in there. We will. I appreciate that heads up, man. He said, now that week one is officially in the books, my question for the Ravens besides the offensive line, which we all knew was going to be a work in progress, was Todd Monken's playbook. I thought how Kansas City used uh, Rasheed Rice is how the Ravens should use Rashad Bateman and Isaiah Likely. Get them matched up on linebackers by running crossing routes and letting them take advantage of the mismatch. That would be a good idea, especially Isaiah Likely in that situation. But, I mean, Rashad Bateman, too, because Rasheed Rice – 
for the first two quarters, for sure, some in the third quarter, fourth quarter, he got quiet. But that boy was just killing the Ravens, destroying the Ravens from start to almost finish. But for majority of the game, he was doing his thing. That boy was just balling, man. And Ravens just had no answers. And it was matchup probably, yeah, when Roquan Smith was on him, ooh, yikes. Talked about Malik Harrison. Well, Malik Harrison was never on him, but Roquan Smith and he, mm -mm. Trent Simpson now, hey, Trent Simpson, okay now. But, yeah, it, it was rough. Anyway, continuing, he said maybe they have it in their playbook and just didn't use it, or maybe the offensive line just wasn't good enough for them to run those plays. I think that that's a big part of it because when your offensive line is not the best, then you cannot open up the full playbook because the offensive line, they can't really block for that long. He said, the other issue I had was with the use of Derrick Henry. Every time he was in, you basically knew it was a run or he was in for protection. I was hoping they would use him in a short passing game more. Mm, that's something right there. And that would be nice to see. Uh, Derrick Henry really incorporated to the Baltimore Ravens offense a lot more in, in different ways. But the reason I ain't tripping because it was just one game. I, I'm not tripping because it's, it's just one game. Now, if this becomes a pattern, which we it, it ain't going to be a pattern. We're just going to say it now. It's not going to be a pattern for the Baltimore Ravens, right, Ravens? Y'all not going to make it a pattern, right? But anyway, uh, if it becomes a pattern, then it'll be an issue. But one game, I ain't going to trip. He said, they basically told KC's defense what was happening before the play even started. Yes, that's what I said, too. I said that exact same thing. That was my biggest fear with bringing in Derrick Henry. Love him as a running back. No, he can do everything. No, he's like that. Hall of Famer. But just don't want offense and didn't want offense – Ravens offense to be predictable and be telling. Like, all right, if Derrick Henry's in, they probably gonna run. They might pass, but they probably gonna run. If Derrick Henry's out, oh, they passing for sure. And that's exactly how it was. He said, maybe I'm overreacting because I, it because I just miss watching our Ravens. I just want them to use their personnel better. Likely and Hill did have a good day. Now I want them to get Henry, Bateman, and Andrews on that same page. And hopefully they do. Hopefully they do. We know what Mark Andrews is capable of already. Um, with Rashad Bateman, again, potential's there. We hope that that potential gets brought out of him. With Henry, we know what he can do, but we haven't seen it for the, the, the long haul in the Baltimore Ravens uniform. That was his first game, of course, yeah. Offensive line, they're going to get better, of course, yeah. Derrick Henry, he should get better, too, with that offensive line getting even better and him getting more opportunities as well. EDC trade for Devontae Adams. This next question or comment came from my guy TJ. He said, how Gardner in slippery hands – Gardner Minshew uh, looks EDC go get Devontae Adams and Quan Bolden times eight I believe I want to give up on him sometimes but faith moves mountains get Devontae Adams let's get this ring God bless the family and the channel and all Ravens amen get Devontae Adams now hey there was some rumors that said he wasn't happy but then he shut down them rumors and said he was happy so maybe he could be happier with the Baltimore Ravens that's one that I certainly wouldn't mind um, but how would he be with the off script stuff because we know Devon I know he could do it good but Devontae Adams is a very very on script type of wide receiver I feel like a better fit uh for somebody like Lamar Jackson for somebody like the Baltimore Ravens not saying it would happen but somebody like a Tyreek Hill we just need a receiver who is just when the play breaks down like, and we know Devontae Adams could do that too so again he would be a good fit as well but when that play breaks down like he's like okay I gotta watch this so somebody that can adjust to that, that's the type of wide receiver that we would need. Offensive play call. The next question came from my guy, Josiah. He said, Angry Raven, hope you and the fam are doing good. Hey, we're doing real good. I appreciate you, Josiah. He said, I've been watching your videos since about 2021, if I remember correctly. Ooh, that's a long time. I appreciate that. He said, I'm from the Caribbean, and I fell in love with the NFL and Lamar's game and decided to support the Ravens. And you appeared on my recommendations after watching a couple of highlights. Okay, shout out to YouTube for making that connection. I appreciate that. He said, now enough yapping. Is it just me or do you feel like the rest of the team keep it clean gets jealous watching other teams' offenses with the creativity and the smoothness they have? Oh, yeah. 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 Now, last year, early on, the Ravens, Ravens offense, they were in a brand-new offense on the top monkey, and there were some growing pains. But last year, once they got going, they got going. And I ain't really had no jealousy for nobody else. Maybe in that AFC Championship game I did. But other than that, No. Like, the Ravens were getting it, and they were getting it in so many different ways. They would get it from Akeem Mitchell. They would get it from Isaiah Likely. Before he got hurt, they were getting it from Mark Andrews. Like, Gus Edwards was contributing. Uh, Zay Flowers, obviously, was killing. So, they were getting it in a lot of different ways. So, that was a beautiful thing to see. And there have been times when the Ravens offense, they, they've, they've been killing it. Like, different times over the years and stuff. But then there are those times where it's like, hey, what's, what's, what's going on with us? Or we're looking at other offenses like, <laughs> why can't that be us? Anyway, continuing, he said... Um, don't get me wrong I'm well aware of how good our offense is And how dominant and consistent it is But I can't help but appreciate How other teams scheme open guys And how they utilize their weapons And wish Lamar had that To really take his passing to the next level mm. 
Another thing is we need to stop calling so many deep balls for Bateman and get him going on an intermediate uh, where he and Lamar connect best. I hope Todd Munger can show us something in year two. Sorry for the lengthy message. I'm out. This wasn't lengthy at all. <laughs> not at all, my friend. But yeah, uh, with Rashad Bateman, not only just getting them connected on the intermediate stuff, but just getting them connected, period. Getting Rashad Bateman involved, period. Scheming him open, finding ways to get him involved. You see how they do with Zay Flowers? And you ain't even got, I mean, you could do some end of rounds with Rashad Bateman, some, some reverses, some jet sweeps, but get him involved in the screen game too. Set him up for some screen plays so he can get the ball in his hands early, make some people miss, and just show, show you what he could do. Like, with Rashad Bateman, the plays that they do for him, it seems like they, they are boom or bust plays, and that's it. With Zay Flowers, they give him everything. And we know, we know what Zay Flowers can do. He, he's, he's amazing. But give some of that to Rashad Bateman too. So we can find out about him. And if Rashad Bateman can have success with those plays, then, oof, then the sky's the limit for the offense. Next question came from my guy, Caleb. He said, good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon. He said, question for you. Do you think it would be a good idea for us to trade Mark Andrews? Likely is clearly number one, and we need serious offensive line help. Oof, Mark Andrews will certainly get us that for everything that he'll be worth, but no. Uh, I, I would not do it. Uh, I would keep these two together for as long as you could. That could be possibly till the end of this year. If likely still does remain tight in one, you know, Mark Andrews ain't going to want to take no back seat to Isaiah Likely. And that's, of course, respectfully and whatnot. But Andrews has been the number one tight end in the league. Not the best tight end in the league, but he's been a number one tight end for the Baltimore Ravens uh, pretty much his entire career. And if he were to be not necessarily benched, but moved to number two, you think he gonna want? You think he gonna want to stay around for that? I don't think so, and I wouldn't have no problem with him not wanting to stay around for that because go be tight end one. If if you lost your job, if you could get an opportunity somewhere else, go for it, no problem. So, but I would not trade him this year, not not at all, not at all. Just to have Isaiah Likely and Mark Andrews like on the same team at the same time, if Todd Monk can figure out a way to to use them, incorporate both of them, oof. It could be dangerous, man. Crazy week for the AFC North. This next question came from our guy Ricky Williams. He said, Ain't Graven, what an unexpected week one surprise for our division. And a lot of this I didn't see coming at all. Give me your thoughts. So what was worse? The Bengals embarrassing loss? Yes, that was the worst one. That, that was the worst one by far. Because Bengals were at the crib, and it was the Bengals. Like, and they going against the Patriots? Like, new head coach. They got, what, Jacoby Brissett at quarterback. And Jacoby Brissett ain't bad, but Jacoby Brissett at quarterback... Like, this team rebuilding rebuilding the roster completely, starting over from scratch. Like, yeah, and you lost to them at your crib. Oof, that's it. So that's worse for me. Anyway, he said, B, Browns embarrassing loss. Nope. Ravens losing to KC again. Nope. Steelers winning without any touchdowns. Nope. It was Bengals. It was all Bengals. All Bengals. You know, that, that's the loss that I celebrated the most. I, I, was, I was a little hated this weekend. I was a little hated this weekend. I was hating on the Bengals. Well, not actually not hating them. I was actually loving them for what they did. Cause they lost to the Patriots, uh, so that that was great. He said, "To be fair, I picked all four. Uh, much love to you and yours. Seeing keep it clean on to the home opener. Yeah, here come the Raiders. 